Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts about um, what is exactly happening in this world and, uh, um, you know, the Israel-Palestine, uh, Israel-Palestine situation, then the drama that is happening in the UN, and then US versus, US with Israel versus Russia with, uh, what is that, uh, Palestine. I'll give you my opinion about all this. And I'll give you also how this spills over to our day-to-day -day lives and what we can learn from it. And feel free to put down your thoughts in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly. I always tend to read them. Uh, about me, um, personal branding strategist. My name is Loy Macedo. I help people get well-paying jobs in uh, Dubai, UAE or the Middle East, that is Saudi, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman. And people also book my services for coaching, consulting, whether it's for personal, you know, personal, professional issues, challenges, or stuff they cannot share with anyone, or they want a totally different point of view. Because I, I keep it very practical, doable. I don't give you this cliche bullshit advice that you get on the internet or goody-goody coaches. Okay, details are put down below. So let's focus on this one. Now, I'm pretty sure all of you uh, are bombarded enough and more through YouTube's algorithm. You'll see, depending on which channel you're subscri subscribe, subscribed to, Al Jazeera, CNN, Fox News, TRT, uh, enough and more uh, uh, Indian channels, then the local channels, like, for example, if you're from UAE, Khalid Times, Gulf News, National Paper, then you have, um, you can further divide it into the West and the Western media that will portray Israel as uh, the victim and the hero and Palestine as the villain and, you know, the perpetrator of evil. And if you are from the uh, Arab world or from the Muslim world or... Um, you know, you, you look at things without supporting the West, you would see both Hamas, uh, sorry, both Palestine and Israel, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, uh, the fact that children are being killed because of this bombing, and how this whole war is proving to be an ugly affair. In fact, if you're neutral and you look at it, you just see that this is proving to be the most ridiculous situation ever and uh, you don't have to go very far just look at what is happening in the un united nations they are just having speeches after speeches after speeches and we'll have this voting we'll veto this we'll have another voting we'll veto that it's just a bloody waste of time i you know seriously i i question what is the point of having this un this un is just garbage what is this un I mean, it looks like everyone wears suit and tie to go give speeches there. He will give a speech, he will protest, he will uh, propose a, let's have a vote for this. And even if the entire majority, let's say out of 10 members, 9 say yes, US can still veto and say, no, all 9, garbage. What then, what is the point of all this, man? It's, it's so stupid. And Israel will be very selective what they say and they will only show, uh, you know, the parts which uh, portray them in a positive light while Palestinians, they will keep crying about the fact that, you know, you have taken our land and right now, you know, you don't have to be left or right or to see the videos that are coming out of, you know, innocent children, women. People being killed in Palestine, carpet bombing. I, I I just don't understand 
how bombing civilians is going to help and that also you don't give them food water shelter uh, sorry oil or medicines okay so we can see all this and then we can see uh, russia you know uh, trying to uh, you know bring this situation because of the power that they have and then us is saying oh double standards and all you know you, at some point you just begin to wonder what is the point what's the point of all this in fact you know i just wrote down my thoughts just look look at it this way okay tell me which part of the sentences that i give you is false usa is always right usa is always a good guy usa is perfect tell me if i'm wrong with russia usa is right with uh, supporting israel usa is right then uh, when they you know took over afghanistan or try to take over they were right when they pulled out also they were right when they claimed weapons of mass destruction they were right for iraq and uh, when they toppled saddam hussein also they were right and when they failed to set up the government also they were right usa is always right it's like watching a hollywood movie where the hero is always usa okay that's one then second one is anybody who is kissing the rear end of usa in politics the more you kiss the higher you are in terms of uh, favorability france supporting us in everything uk supporting usa in everything european union some of the countries not all Uh, so yeah we are the allies we are the good guys oh and they will call themselves like freedom fighters and democracy and all that and russia iran uh, venezuela uh, any other country that is not supporting is against them they even try to uh, you know try to trap india by their rhetoric but uh, jay shankar he knows how to put them in their place brilliant brilliant you should see his interviews i just i'm such a big fan of his when i listen to him answer reporters it's a delight okay this guy is a, a foreign minister of india jay shankar i hope i got his name right brilliant brilliant he is a brilliant mind i i love that guy okay so and one last i have to say this one when france talks about uh, you know drawing cartoons about islam or criticizing islam or talking bad about islam or muslims these western countries will say freedom of speech but the minute you criticize or even draw a cartoon of an israelite or a jew the minute you do that it's anti semitic i i i i don't understand even even uh, it seems uh, the guardian i think he just drew a cartoon and that was considered anti semitic or what it is just a cartoon so this is the problem and even we have seen instagram meta facebook if you put posts which make is uh, israel look good it's allowed but if you put a post that shows the plight of palestinians or that shows palestine in a good light you are shadow banned or blocked or i don't know what uh, what is the other thing it was uh, uh, your channel is just shut down or whatever instagram or whatever some reporters were saying so okay what i say is this is the world these are the politics you can't change the system at least for me and given that i'm i don't have any skin in the game i don't see any reason to make a big noise about it okay i'm i'm being very honest because i can share an opinion but it doesn't impact me see the israel palestine conflict doesn't impact me but as a spectator i can see what is happening and that leads me to a very disturbing thought and the disturbing thought is man if this is how the world is tomorrow if some injustice would happen to me with these people who always get get away with things then 
what do you what would you do like you know i want you to see the movie siriana i just happened to watch that brilliant movie it's a slow burn very slow burn i watched that movie uh george clooney is being featured in that it's it's a good movie let me just tell you who are the actors uh one second siriana see siriana siriana movie okay uh s y r i a n a it's a american political thriller film you need to watch it you need to watch it i mean brilliantly it's it's like wherever oil is discovered america is there america is there to bring freedom you, you know how it is okay So now, given that I've I've told you all this, okay, like even if everyone knows why Russia, um, you, you know, attacked Ukraine, it is not because Russia is a bad guy. It's because U.S. didn't keep its promise. Everyone knows this. U.S. didn't stick to its word. It just kept expanding, expanding, and Russia had to put its foot down. And they thought uh, we will conquer Russia. No, sorry, you're mistaken. <laughs> it's uh you overestimated yourself you underestimated them and that is why now all the other countries like india um african countries the arab countries they realize we can't trust us anymore uh, we don't know when you'll just turn your back and uh, stab us man now why do you think they are forming all this brics and all these other associations even uh, southeast countries they like enough of us Uh, you are a self-appointed watchdog or policeman, but you are abusing your powers. Everyone knows. In fact, Americans themselves know this. Okay, so now what has this got to do with you and me or our day-to-day -day lives? Okay, you know, I was just thinking about all this, and there were lots of thoughts that were coming to my mind. One is life is not fair. one is politics is dirty one is those who have power and money can get away with a lot of shit so those general thoughts were there okay and given the fact that i was born and raised in uh, you know dubai uh, ue for all these years i know what it is to be under let's say a king or a a rule of land or law of the land uh, based on islam okay and how uh, i wouldn't say explicit racism but corporate racism of uh, highlighting their citizens and how the people from the west with white skin and white passport are looked up to and uh, people with you know asian passport or brown skin or darker skin are looked down i've i've seen all that i've been through all that so i have a very different uh, viewpoint of life and uh, i've accepted i've accepted this as reality you can't change it eh? it's uh, people can give you a lot of sweet talk like even people when they migrate to canada or us or australia they think oh land of the free home of the brave and here equal rights but you can't uh, regulate a person's thought process their heart and i'll tell you this there will always be that little bit of racism that will always be there with within people you can't help it it's it's just there okay maybe it's not as bad as some arab countries or even india indians complete a, a complaint of racism india itself is the most racist and they are racist among not only others among themselves with double standards to the highest level being an indian passport holder i'm telling you this okay so coming once again like what is the lesson i i would just say that um, you know we cannot change the system that's we can't we are not nelson mandela or we are not uh, some mahatma gandhi to create a revolution so then you know people say so what do you want me to put my head down and take injustice see even when in united states no slavery was there and they were you know uh, i want you to see the movie 12 years as a slave oh goodness oh, so graphic oof I don't know if you can even see that twelve years as a slave. Oh, what brilliant acting! I'll give you the name of that guy. He acted in what was that? Twelve uh, years as a slave. What is his name? Yeah, Chi C H I 
W E T L Chuvetel E G O 4. Oof, his name itself is very hard. Chuvetel E G 4. Okay, Michael Fassbender, brilliant acting. Brilliant. Oh, goodness, Michael Fassbender, he acts so evil. You literally believe. And he's the guy who acted uh, in uh, as Doctor Strange. Okay. Uh, no, no, not Dr. Strange. What am I saying? Michael Fassbender as X-Men, Magneto. Yeah. B Benedict Cumberbatch is also there. Oh, I love that guy. Uh, and Brad Pitt also. So, but the, the acting by this guy, Chivitel, and even that female, Lupita Nyugo. Oh, they deserve an... Uh, I don't know if they got an Oscar or whatever, but this was... Brilliant man, but it's very painful to watch. Huh? Very, very painful to watch. It's actual true story. So, see, uh, it, it's about slaves. How slaves are treated. And this guy was a uh, well-to-do rich guy, but he got kidnapped and then sold as a slave uh, through a lot of injustice. So he he escaped. He fought and he escaped. Okay, even uh, Will Smith's that uh, uh, new movie. Uh, what is that? Liberation. Will Smith uh, uh, slave movie. What is that uh, name? Yeah. Emancipation. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Okay. Might not like Will Smith as a personality, especially after the slap. But I kind of like these movies because they're very powerful. Very real. Okay. So now, you know, when you see these slave movies, you can either keep quiet, take the injustice, or you can fight for yourself. Or you can fight and create a revolution. Now, what I say is, see, I'm not one of those revolution types. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I am not that revolution type at all. If you are, kudos to you. But just talking is, talking and chatting on WhatsApp is not a revolution. You need to show with actions. So I'm the type of guy, I have a family, I have expenses, I have my goals. I'm not going to change the world. I'm not Nelson Mandela that will take you know, 40, 30, 40, 50 years in jail for other people. No, that's not me. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you, I'm no hero. Okay. Then there are only two things left. One is put your head down and do your work. Or the second one is um, fight for yourself. I would say I'm more of those two. You should know when to put your head down and do your work. And take shit and you should know when to stand up for yourself and standing up for yourself is not about using force blunt force trauma whatever like the, how they say in rocky uh, blunt force trauma you know punch in that movie rocky rocky six or seven or whatever um but it's more like using being smart using your mind knowing how to play the game because if you know how to use this, it's much better than using just brawn and strength strategy. Okay. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm super smart, all that. But when you're on the streets no, and you have to survive, you think street smart. And that's why for me, when I lost everything, uh, 2011, um, I was on the streets. I had to figure out a way. I couldn't use force. I couldn't, uh, I didn't want to put my head down and just die off. I had to fight for myself, but I used strategy. Where I had to use people also, I used them. I used even people who are very good people, but it was either sink or swim, survive, thrive or die, you know. So all I'm trying to tell you through this entire video is you will see this injustice happening. You will see things in front of your eyes which just don't, doesn't make sense. Like they are bombing a hospital. Like Israel, they, that idea for whatever they are naming, they bombed the hospital and then they're saying, no, we didn't bomb. First they said we bombed and then they said we didn't bomb. Palestinians bombed. Why would they bomb themselves? What nonsense you're talking? And then uh, this French president and uh, 
Ben Shapiro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have got uh, evidence that they bombed themselves. Oh, we have got evidence. 45 babies were beheaded. Which later on turned out to be fake news. Even Joe Biden said, I have seen that video, I was shocked. But then he retracted his statement. And I told you, you know, in my WhatsApp group, one guy, he completely went ballistic. And uh, I asked him, like, did you see the baby is getting chopped head off? Did you see it? Why should I see it? I know this is true. I know this is how Palestinians are. Like, why? Yeah. And the only reason he supported because he is Jew. I was like, come on, man. I, I don't hate the Israelites. I don't hate Jews. But I'm asking you for evidence. No. No. He went all ballistic, personal and this and that. And finally, when I told him, listen, if you can't take it, you can't handle it. Uh, it ruined a friendship. A friendship of so many years. Okay. And later on, after he, I blocked everything finished, we found out the news was fake. So we live in a world where power and money, you know, they just, it might is always right. You can't do anything about it. Nobody who shouted and screamed weapons of mass destruction were punished. Nobody was held accountable for the millions of Iraqis, millions of civilians in, you know, Vietnam, or Afghanistan, or any of the Arab countries, the Syrian bombing, anything, anything. Nobody is going to be held accountable. Nobody. And uh, America is always going to be right. Israel is always going to be on America's side. France will always have its double standards where you can speak about anything over on, you know, freedom of speech, except you can't speak about Macron, and now you can't speak about uh, Israel, like if you have a protest, if you're supporting Israel, that's a protest allowed. But if you're supporting Palestinian, that's terrorism. I don't know, man. You know, the more I think about it, more I hear, the more <laughs> head pains. But then I think, better mind my own business and figure out how, what lessons I can learn from them and where I can apply and improve my life and give my family and the people I love a better life. Because we cannot change the system. You cannot fight the system. You can't create a revolution. All we can do is do the best with what we have and uh, capitalize on, you know, our survival. Yeah. So all I'll tell you is be smart. Use this. Learn how to survive. Play the game. If you have to you know, like they say, you know, fake an orgasm. Go ahead and do it, man. Uh, there are females who do that <laughs> because they just want the guy to stop. So, survival of the fittest, like this, you know. And fittest doesn't mean only muscles. Fittest means this. We are part of a system. We can't fight the system. We can't create a revolution. So try to survive within that. And just focus the best for you and your family. Rest. Just leave it. Sometimes even if you see injustice or you see something bad. Yeah, you can be the hero and come forward. But then don't complain, don't cry. If you end up getting not only injured, but permanently injuring yourself. End of the day, you will get and applause and compliments, but nobody is going to shoulder your cross. Anyway, that is what I wanted to share with you. Good, bad, ugly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's me signing off. You guys take care.